needed. The gifts in time. The gifts in life. I'm sorry, the gifts in life. The letter T again, standing for timely. Timely. When you think about all that uh, we have gone over the last three weeks to lead us up to this event, we've talked about G being the giver. Giver, every gift originates from a giver. God gave so that we could give. Giving is better than getting. Hope you remember that tomorrow. And when we give, uh, we get. When we give, we get. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, shall men give into your bosom. And don't ever forget that principle that God has always designed uh, that uh, as we are uh, given more, we are to give more. And uh, that's just kind of the way that he works and the way that he knows uh, is best for you and me. The letter I stands for investment. The giver invests in our lives. Investment, it's founded in love. It's focused upon the needs of others. And the future of investment produces eternal rewards, eternal rewards. And we have those things to look forward to, even in the song uh, that you just sang, to think about that He's coming and He's going to call for us and that one day we will be able to be with our Savior forever and ever and ever and ever. And I know that we look at Him today and tomorrow as that little babe in a manger and I know that we think of Him as, as that, that one that was uh, uh, just a newborn on that supposedly silent night, all right? That's supposed. Uh, uh, in fact, the reality is there's a lot of issues with Christmas songs. That's why we don't sing them as much as probably uh, you would like us to sing them, right? Because some of the things you need to check against the Bible, uh, the way it is. Just like all those nativity scenes and you know how to go there, right? When you put the wise men at the stable, that's biblically incorrect. <gasps> Yikes, really? That's correct, because when you read the Bible, the wise men didn't visit Jesus until he was in a house. Uh, okay, I'm moving on. That's meddling. I'm going to start preaching, all right? Uh, but when you think about here, what the Lord has designed in, in store for us is not just the babe in a manger, but one day he's going to be that coming king for you uh, and for me, uh, those of us that are uh, the children of God. And then the letter F is freely. We talked about this last Sunday. Uh, the condition of freely is it's undeserved, it's unaffordable, and many times we're unaware that we even have that need. And uh, boy, there's a lot of truth uh, to that that we could just really relish in a little bit, but we're going to keep going. Then there's the cost of freely. The cost to the receiver, but then the cost to uh, the giver. And by the fact is this, that God gave the most precious thing that He possibly could. He gave Himself. And uh, He died on the cross for your sin and for my sin. And then connection, connection because we have been freely given to, we also can now freely uh, give. Therefore, make the commitment, and I hope that you did, Freely give, freely uh, give. But today we want to look at the letter T, and that's timely. Timely. Uh, the, the first uh, aspect that we look at this morning here is timely is given great emphasis. Timely is given great emphasis. Now you say, where in the world do you go in the Word of God to find this aspect of giving uh, that invests or a giver that invests timely? And uh, where could you go? I mean, the reality is this. As I was studying this, there is a multitude of scriptures, all right? But because it's uh, Christmas Eve and you don't want to be in church till Christmas Day, we had to kind of decide on at least... Did you say amen to that? Amen. Why? Just being truthful. Pastor. Come on, brother. You know you could help me out a little bit here this morning, all right? Think about those gifts. Yeah. All right. The rest of you guys are be dismissed at invitation time, except for Brother Patrick. Him and I have some private sessions today, all right? Timely is given great emphasis. Uh, since it's Christmas time, we're going to think about the Savior and the birth. Do you realize that the birth of Jesus Christ was a very timely matter? A very timely incident, a very timely situation. Uh, Luke chapter 2, uh, verse 11. Luke chapter 2, verse 11. You might want to turn over there. We're going to be going to a couple different places this morning. But Luke chapter 2, in verse 11, says this, For unto you is born this day. This day, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. 
And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, a lying in a manger. And, and, and it's amazing to think about the timeliness of God's gift, especially concerning the Savior, Jesus Christ. It was no accident that Jesus was born when he was born. It's no accident he was born uh, where he was born because there's a lot of emphasis from the very beginning of time to the very end of time that there is a situation that these things must occur at certain times. And this emphasis of the timely birth of our Savior is also found in the book of Galatians. Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4 and verse 4. The Bible says these words, but when the fullness of the time was come. The fullness of the time was come. In other words, when that moment that it was complete, when that moment that everything was in place, when that moment that it was ready, what happened? God sent forth His Son. What did He do? He gave His only begotten Son. God sent forth His Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. Can I tell you today that your salvation is no accident? <laughs> It was timely matter that God intended for it to happen at the moment that it happened. Even when we move over into the death of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Maybe you want to turn over with me to 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1, I give you just a second to get over there. 1 Peter chapter 1, you say, Pastor, why should we turn in our Bibles over there? Well, for some of you, you need something to kind of keep your mind occupied. <laughs> Uh, others of you, it's just a good thing to learn, all right? To uh, keep your Bible going. First Peter chapter 1 in verse 18, the Bible says this, For as much as ye know there were, that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers. Now that's, a, that's really a mouthful right there. But with the precious blood of Christ, okay? And this again is this gift that was so timely uh, when it was given. The precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Now I want you to get the latter part of this verse because this is a very important aspect of the timely that is emphasized in salvation. It says this, Who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times, for you. Now, what does that mean here today? This is, this is the concept, and you'll see this in a couple other places in the Scriptures. Revelation talks about this, the Lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. Uh, here in, in 1 Peter, we see this idea that, that it was foreordained before the foundation of the world. What is the foundation of the world referring to? That is referring to the creation of this universe. And I don't know about you, but I simply believe that God created this universe. And I believe he did it in six days. I don't think he needed any extra time. The reality is he didn't need six days, but he just kind of uh, laid it out there for six days to help you and I to understand what a work week is. And then he rested on that seventh day. I, I believe the way that Genesis records it is really the way that it happened. And if you believe it any differently, I'm sorry that you're deceived. It is the truth and it's the way it is. Don't let these scientists or these PhDs or these doctors try to talk you out of the plain, simple truth of the Word of God. The reality is they just don't want to trust it because then they have to acknowledge that he's their God and that they must uh, uh, surrender and submit to him, okay? But in the process of this creation thing, when God created this wor world, that's when everything began to exist, okay? Except for him. He's always existed and he always will exist. Amen? Amen. Amen, because he's our God. You say, explain that to me, Pastor. I can't explain that to you, and you're never going to comprehend it, even if I could. But it is a fact, and this is what takes place, because this is our God. Now, here's what God, in his infinite foreknowledge, knowing that you would be born into this world, and knowing that every, all, all people that have ever been born would be born into this world, he knew there would be a sin issue. And in having a sin issue, he knew that there must be a, a plan of salvation put into effect for the sin of mankind. I mean, isn't this a wonderful thought? That before God, before I was even created, before I was ever born, that God already had in store, he already had in creation 
a plan of how he would provide salvation for you and for me. You talk about a timely matter. And then in the process of all of that, he knew at the right moment that Jesus Christ would be placed on this earth. He knew at the right moment when Jesus would be born. He knew at the right moment when Jesus would live. He knew the right moment when Jesus would die. And he knows the right moment when Jesus is coming again. In Mark chapter 13, in verse 32, the Bible says these words, But of that day and that hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. Therefore take ye heed, watch and pray, for ye know not when the time is. You don't know when the time is, but there is emphasis placed that that time is is coming and when it comes to the return of the Lord everybody loves to ask the question well pastor when is when is Jesus going to come back when is he going to come back I, I would really like to charge every credit card that I have to its max right before he returns ah uh, wrong reasoning there okay uh, because that's a guarantee he won't be back you know <laughs> or that, that he'll delay it uh, the, the, the truth is is that we do have a lot of things uh, that, that God has given to us to help us to be able to see when that time is getting close all right when that time is is coming uh, uh, coming quickly but we, we don't know exactly the hour the day and you've seen it uh, especially recently man you've got people that put a date and a time to it and they've all been wrong now they look like idiots and they try to make Make us look like uh, idiots too but the this is where I stand as the Lord knows but it is a timely matter and it will happen at the moment that God has determined it to happen the emphasis is placed on time or timely is given great emphasis because the gift is only beneficial when it arrives on time. It's Christmas Eve, by the way. Now, for, for those of you that are in the category with me, we still might have a little bit of shopping to do. Amen. Thank you, Miss Tracy. Now, here's the thing, though. She's on her own on this one because I'm done. Could be done. But that's true. But not typically I'm not done. In fact, I would say probably out of most of the years, I've always had to do at least some kind of shopping on Christmas Eve. The problem was is today was Sunday. And I had to focus a little more on preaching and teaching and all of that kind of stuff versus uh, shopping, all right? But, but you know, the reality is this. If you've been out and about at all the last three or four days, you can realize how many people have needed to buy Christmas gifts and the traffic is insane and the and the stores are packed and the lines are long why because we have this mindset that these gifts must be purchased before tomorrow and they must be purchased by tomorrow so that we can give this gift to that individual on Christmas now I've always threatened my family that we're gonna change Christmas to just to January 25th that way we can get all the specials that are happening after Christmas and uh, we don't have to get caught in the hustle and bustle and we can just make it about Christ and only about Christ and then we'll, we'll worry about giving gifts in January or something like that. You know, I still might do that one year. I, that really does still sound like a good idea to me. Yeah, okay, okay. You, you're going to have to quiet down over here on this side. All right. <laughs> Timely, right? If Patrick wants to get me a Christmas gift today, which he's going to owe me one after this service, all right, then it's going to be important that he has it now, all right? Now, now is the time. Now, now I want you to think about this, okay? Because do you realize that before Jesus was born, there was quite a amount of people that had lived. The first individuals that were created was Adam and Eve. And then came Cain and Abel, and then went Abel, and then came whole bunch more after them and you know there is there is a lot of people that lived prior to Jesus Christ ever coming on this earth now does that make them not be able to get saved they were sinners we know that we can read the stories they needed a Savior but Jesus came at a specific time 
some 2,000 years ago. And then he died and he gave his life. You ever thought about that before? But this is why timely is emphasized. Because before the foundation of the world, God already had this plan of salvation in effect. And that's why we, in the year 2017, almost 2018, we look back to when Christ came. And they, before Christ came, looked forward to Christ coming. But because it was before the foundation of the world, it was already in effect and Jesus, or God taught it to those people so that mankind from the very first Adam to the very last soul that lives will all have opportunity to trust Jesus Christ as their Savior. It is a timely gift, a timely gift. But let me move on this morning. Number two, timing is part of the evidence. Timing is part of the evidence. So it's not only emphasized, but it's also given as evidence, all right? Evidence. And uh, when we see this kind of aspect, again, we're going to talk about the Savior here and, and, and uh, the birth and the death and the, and, the, and the return to realize that a lot of that points, because of the timing involved in this gift, it points to the fact that it really is so. It's part of the evidence that we have that says He is the Messiah. Uh, back over to Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2. And as you're turning there, let me give you just a few thoughts in regards to the fact that uh, our Savior was born when He was born. And because He was born when He was born, it has now proven evidence that He is the Messiah. That He is the gift of God for all mankind. You know that there's many, many prophecies concerning Jesus Christ. In fact, somebody numbered Him about 333. Uh, prophecies. Now that, that extends over his whole uh, life from the very uh, birth to his death and to his return. But there's a lot of prophecies that Jesus fulfilled uh, in being the Messiah uh, that he is. But when you think about it in relation to his birth, do you realize that he was born at the exact moment that he needed to be born so that he would be born in Bethlehem? I don't think Mary and Joseph ever intended Jesus to be born in Bethlehem. Now maybe had they looked at the scriptures, maybe had they had a little bit of understanding that he would be born in Bethlehem, maybe they would have tried to do something like that. But because of the taxation that took place at that particular moment, they had by law, they were forced to travel to the little town of Bethlehem. Uh, though they lived in Nazareth, they had to travel to Bethlehem. You know this became an important fact because when Jesus grew older and he began teaching and, and uh, preaching, uh, they, they challenged him with this fact. They said, listen, can anything good come out of Nazareth? I mean, that's what these religious guys were thinking because they knew that Joseph and his family were from the area of Nazareth. But they also knew the scripture said in order for him to be the Messiah, he had to be born in Bethlehem. Now this is where the timing comes in. This is why it's evidence. Because the taxation re required Joseph to travel. He took Mary with him because he didn't want to leave her behind and have the baby without him. Uh, still, they traveled. That had been a pretty rough journey. But once they got to Bethlehem, guess what? All of a sudden, Jesus is ready to come out. What a coincidence, right? How about the fact that the prophets had pr prophesied pre be before that during the death, uh, during the, uh, the birth of Jesus Christ, that this aspect of what King Herod ordered uh, the, of the death of all the children two years and un younger across the land and, and, and the prophets that prophesied and said that there would be this wailing and, and this mourning that would take place. You know, that had to be part of the time because Herod had to be on the throne and Herod at that moment had to decide you know what, I don't want this little baby to live. I'm just going to kill all the other babies and hopefully uh, kill him, which thankfully uh, he did not do, was not able to get to Jesus Christ because of the protection that God provided. But again, what is that? That it's evidence that we're talking about the Messiah, the gift that God provided. Then you think of all the individuals that were involved in the birth of Jesus Christ and how the perfect timing was all about those individuals uh, being born in Luke or being there a part of that birth in Luke chapter 2 and verse 25. 
there was a man... Uh, behold, it says there, there was a, in verse uh, 25 of chapter 2, Behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Ghost was upon him, and it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Now, if God's gift had been late, this guy might have died, and then the Bible would be lying. But that's not the way it happened because timing in the way that God gave, He gave in a timely manner, it is evidence of this gift that He has provided uh, you and I with. It says it was revealed unto by the Holy Ghost, He should not see death before He had seen the Lord's Christ. And He came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for Him uh, after the custom of the law, then took He up Him, or took He Him up in His arms and blessed God. God and said, Lord, now let us thy servant depart in peace according to thy word, for mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people. Listen, Jesus was born at the very moment that he needed to be born. Amen. What a Messiah that we have. Mary, Joseph, John the Baptist, Elizabeth, Anna, the shepherds. I mean, you got so many other people involved. The wise men and all of them right at the right moment at the right time. Right then, right there. Because our gift from God was a timely gift. You think about when he would die. You go over to the book of Daniel. Don't go there today because we don't have time. But we're not going to take the time. Daniel's prophecies and when the Messiah would be cut off. The relation that Jesus was in, in, uh, or that Jesus took in regards to the Passover and how He had to die on a certain day and a certain month and a certain date and how that high Passover had to be accomplished and how that all of that intricately fits together to demonstrate of what a gift we have received in Jesus Christ. And then you think of His return and all the times that go along with that. But you know there's something about the timing of God's gift that provides us with evidence that He really does care about us. It's the same thing when we give to others. But in Psalm chapter 68, verse 19, the Bible says, Blessed be the Lord, who daily loadeth us with benefits, even the God of our salvation, Selah. Now, I don't know about you, but that sounds like Christmas Day every day. <laughs> daily loading us with benefits. Why? Because He's such a great God. And we know that in evidence because of the timeliness of His gifts. Daily, He loadeth us uh, with benefits. Turn over to Luke chapter 11, all right? Luke chapter 11. We'll look at this little uh, this passage here uh, to help us a little bit in, in understanding the timeliness uh, behind the gift giving and how it, it really provides us with evidence of the giver uh, that, that God is, but in Luke chapter 11, uh, verse 3, part of the Lord's uh, model prayer that He provided the disciples and teaching them how to pray, uh, not that He ever intended it to be repeated over and over and over again, but rather to be somewhat of a form to give us to be able to use in our prayers. He says here in verse 3, Give us day by day our daily bread. Day by day our daily bread. How many of you enjoy eating daily? Yes, exactly. Uh, we don't uh, typically skip any day that we don't eat, all right? Unless it's a, a specific purpose or uh, maybe there's some kind of uh, unusual reason. But typically we go day by day, we get daily bread. You know that is a gift that God provides us with. You say, well, Pastor, I went to the grocery store and bought it, or I went to the restaurant and paid for it. How did you get the money to pay for it? Well, I earned it. How did you get the ability to earn it? 
I mean, let's just follow it all the way to the end. The reality is it's from the Lord. Now, I know this passage is, is really emphasizing the way that we are to ask, all right? The way that we're to come to God and the way that we are to pray and, and petition God for uh, our needs. But, you know, in the, in the midst of that aspect, it, we also get to see a little glimpse in the giver that our God is and how timely His gifts are that help provide us with evidence that He is such a wonderful and glorious uh, giver. Look here at verse 5. And he said unto them, Which of you shall have a friend, and shall go unto him at midnight, and say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves. Here's the reason. For a friend of mine is in his journey, has come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. So I've gone in, and I've gone in, and I've knocked on Patrick's door at midnight, in the middle of the night. I said, Brother Patrick, hey, listen, uh, uh, Rick Mercer came to church today and I need to be able to feed him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have nothing to feed him with, brother. And he's saying, Pastor, do you realize what time in the middle of the night it is? He shouldn't even be hungry for crying out loud. Let alone, why are you coming to me? Well, brother, all the stores are closed down. It's Christmas Eve. You know, everything's shut down early for a change. He said, McDonald's, I'm sure, is still open somewhere. <laughs> right. I mean, you, you think about it. Okay, so then he goes on here and he says, well, uh, and uh, uh, verse 7, uh, and he from within shall answer and say. Now, from within means this is what he's thinking about, all right? Trouble me not. The door is now shut. My children are, in, are with, uh, with me in bed. I cannot arise and give thee. But, verse 8, now that's probably what all of us would be thinking. Get out of here. Why are you ringing my doorbell? Why are you calling me on the phone? Get, get, listen, go on. But verse 8, I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him because he is his friend, it don't matter how close of friends we are. You don't come knocking on my door at midnight to get a food for somebody else, okay? Yet, because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he needeth. In other words, because of the fact that he is not ashamed to come knocking on my door at midnight and ask for this, and because I'm a little bit too much asleep to really comprehend all the things that are going on, you know what? Whatever I have in the house, it's open to you. Take it and go feed the man. That's the way it worked. But you realize that in the process of that, you have this concept that we can come to God at any time of need and the Lord's going to provide for us. I mean, because His evidence, that the evidence that we receive of Him being such a great giver is in the timeliness of when and how He gives. He says in verse 9, I say unto you, ask and it shall be given you, seek and ye shall find, knock and it shall be opened unto you for everyone that asketh receiveth and he that seeketh findeth and to him that knocketh it shall be opened and I've always looked at these scriptures and, and I believe it is the way that the principle that Jesus is trying to encourage us is, is when we go and we ask the Lord for these things but, but I've forgotten to look at it from the perspective of God giving and God answering. It says in verse 11, If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Jesse, last night, Daddy, I'm hungry. I need a snack. Well, Jesse, there's gravel outside. Go grab some. No, he finds a stool and helps himself to the chip bag. <laughs> Comes in the office, I got me a snack, Dad. Where'd you get that? Oh, the stool, got, the got in the closet, got up and got it. I said, did you close the bag? No. Well, I hope you enjoy your chips. The rest of them are going to be stale now, son. No. What is it? If, you're, if your son needs something and, and there's something to eat, you're not going to give him a stone and say, hope, hope, chew on this for a while. No, that doesn't make any sense, all right? But he also goes on and says, um, if he asks a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Uh, if you ever do that to me. No, I'm just kidding. Or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? Whew. Man, that's pretty rough for a father to be like that. And then verse 13, Jesus says, If ye the many evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him? What am we saying? The timeliness of God's gift. You know, part of the evidence that He is such a great giver is because He knows what we have need of. And He knows when to meet those needs. Yeah, He knows how to meet them. 
but he knows when to meet those needs. I don't know if you've ever experienced that, that amazing experience when you're praying for something and it shows up the moment you need it. It's pretty awesome. It's pretty amazing to see how God can work in such a timely manner. And you know what that does? It, that proves to me that He's real, that He loves me, that He cares about me, and that He knows me. And that's a lot to be said right there. Evidence of a timely gift. Now you think about it for us in relation to others, right? You know, if somebody's hungry and they need food, you can only wait so long to provide food for them. Before, it's too late. Now somebody hungry enough is going to go somewhere else. But you say, uh, I, I need some food, I need some food. Oh, I'll get, I'll get some. Let me see what I got and eventually I'll get back to you. Don't worry, it, it'll work out, you know. But I'm hungry. I need, I need a snack, Dad. Hey, son, someday I'll provide you with a snack. No, I need a snack now. My metabolism is burning everything inside, Dad. And I need to eat. The timeliness of that gift will evidence to my son that I love him enough that I'm willing to give to him. But the last thing I want you to see this morning is this, is time is of the essence. Time is of the essence. Here's the reality. Our Savior has already been born. He's died. He rose again. And He will soon return. Time is of the essence. In Hebrews chapter 9, we have some uh, wonderful passages there in that book but we focus just a little bit here. Verse 26, the Bible says, For then must he have often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now once in the world, or in the end of the world, hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And as it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this, the judgment. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for Him shall He appear the second time without sin unto a salvation. You know, here it is, this, the, the time is of the essence. The fact is this, is that in John 3.16 we talk about how God has given and God has provided, and there is a Savior that offers salvation for anyone who's willing to repent of their sinful condition before a holy and righteous God and trust in the sacrifice of the Savior. But I can tell you this, that the gift of God, salvation through Jesus Christ, until you take it, it is actually sitting there with your name written on it right before you. And the best encouragement I can give you is this, time is of the essence. God has already provided a very timely manner, a gift for you. And it's important that you take this aspect of time and realize that today is that time and reach out and grab that gift and take possession of uh, that gift. You know, the reality is, is not one of us are ever guaranteed tomorrow being Christmas Day for us. I'll never forget the young man, his face is stamped upon my memory. There was a few of them, they came into the church parking lot because of a broken down vehicle. I think he was right around 20. Brother Francis happened to be here, I was here. Came out, tried to help him, talked to him. Brother Francis brought some tracks out. And he handed these guys tracks. The next day you open up the paper and this young man was dead. Nothing wrong with him. He had a motorcycle accident. 20 years old. Died. Can I tell you that time was of the essence for that young man? And if you think that's the only story like that, you're kidding yourself. These things happen often. You're not guaranteed tomorrow 
But I can tell you this, as God has provided you the gift today, right now. You don't have to delay. You don't have to walk out of here without accepting God's gift of salvation. Listen, if you are saved, there's no reason to take the gift again because you already got it. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Praise the Lord. But if you're saved today, time is still of the essence. We must give the gospel while we can. In 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 18, the Bible says, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. The giver invests freely, but the giver invests timely. It's important for you today to understand how to share Jesus Christ with someone else. It's important for you to know and it's important for you to be ready that at the, that, that one timely moment in this world when, when somebody asks of you, hey, I need to know how do I get to heaven? Can you please tell me right now? Right now, can you tell me? I need to know. And you can whip this Bible out. Wow. There we go. And you can show me what it takes. Can I tell you today, time is of the essence. You think I'm preaching that because it's Christmas Eve and tomorrow's Christmas. Maybe you still have some wrapping to do. Maybe you still have some purchasing to do. But I can tell you this, that this particular area goes far beyond any present that you might provide somebody materialistically with today. The truth is this, we must give to others while there is still time. And in giving to them, we must meet the needs. And we must meet the needs in a timely manner. So timely is given great emphasis because the gift is only beneficial when it arrives on time. But timing is part of the evidence because it proves the love of God who knows our needs and knows when those need to be filled. And time is of the essence because we must give while we still have opportunity to give. In 2 Peter chapter 3, turn over there with me if you would, and we'll be finished with this passage. 2 Peter chapter 3. The Bible says these words in verse 9, The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness. In other words, if the Lord says He's going to do it, can I guarantee you this? He is going to do it. There's just no doubt about it. What His Word is, is what, his, what He does. He, he sticks to it. He keeps it. He doesn't change it. But the reality is this. He's long-suffering to us Word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Do you realize this? That the reason that Jesus Christ may not return today is because tomorrow there might be somebody else that needs to accept Him as His personal Savior. I mean, that just that could very well be because the Lord is not slack concerning His promise. He's long-suffering. He's willing that all should be able to accept this gift of salvation, this timely gift that He has provided. But I can tell you one day that time will run out. The day of the Lord, it says in verse 10, will come as a thief in the night. In the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? And this is again fallen into this timely aspect of our gift giving. In verse 12, looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we according to His promise, get this now, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. And in verse 14, Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of Him in peace without spot and blameless. For unto you is born this day a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And when He was born, they proclaimed loudly, Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, what? Peace, goodwill toward men. 
And you know where that peace comes? It's from that gift that God gave in a very timely manner that today is the time for you to accept or the time for you to share. Father, would you help us this morning to understand